with growth comes change. And a lot of y'all that have been in this industry for a while, you already understand there's always a lot of change that's coming. But being in this industry for a while and being a leader, you already understand that everything rises and falls in leadership. So when it comes down to the change that's taking place, a lot of times we can expect the team members and the players to know how to respond, how to react. Because we done been there and done it before. And we forget to oftentimes show them what they need to be doing during that time of change. So I want to take a couple things that I learned from sports and share them with you guys. Because I've I seen them reflected in the national championship game against LSU and, and Clemson. So during that game, there were a couple things that happened that I believe that you can actually take and apply today and actually for the rest of the season to let your team operate like champions. So if you can recall that LSU-Clemson game, that first couple series, LSU came out and they looked out of sync. They weren't very productive offensively like they had been all year. And the reason they was out of sync is because Clemson pretty much moved their cheese. Versus that defense that LSU had prepared to face was a 4-3 base defense that they had prepared to face. During this national championship game, Clemson came out in a 3 1 set. But that 3 1 7 threw them off guard because at that point in time, they had three down linemen. The other eight guys, were sta eight guys were standing up. So they weren't sure they was blitzing. They weren't sure they was in zone. They weren't sure what they was doing. So from Joe Burrow being the quarterback having this great year, all of a sudden, everybody looked like they're running blitz. So they, they weren't very productive on what they were doing. The receivers were dropping balls. They were jumping off sides. It was bad. So a couple series go by. And you see the cameras hand up to the skybox. And when they pan to the skybox, you see the O coordinator and the assistant coordinator. And they look cool, calm, and collected. And when they saw that, you heard the commentator say, these guys have been here before. And at that moment, I said, they've been there before, so they're not panicking. But the team are panicking and a little flustered because they don't realize they've been there before. They was there before when they played against Auburn. All the ran that same 3-1-7 defense against the LSU. And it shook them. However, the team forgot that because that was months ago. So a couple plays go by. They finna get a, a um, the layup game. You see Coach Ojo run call timeout. And Coach Ojo, he's a pretty excitable guy, so he, he gets angry really quick. But when the camera hit him, he wasn't as mad as I was expecting him to be. He actually had a, fa a, a facial expression that was a little frustrated, but all he looked at Joe Burrow and said was, what are you doing? And he asked him, what are you doing? Because there was adjustments that needed to be made, checks that needed to be made that wasn't getting made. And he knew his guys were more than capable of making those adjustments, making those checks, except for they wasn't doing it. Well, at that point, during that timeout, I believe that's when everything shifted. Because the leaders had been talking the talk. Because they've done it before. They've seen the cheese get moved. They've seen those adjustments that need to be made. So they understood it. But during that timeout, I finally believe it clicked to them that, hey, we've been here before, we've done it before, but it's up to us to make the adjustments and show our players what adjustments need to be made so they can go out here and make those adjustments on the field and get the results that they want. So during that timeout, this is the conclusion I came to because it showed on the field. They let them know that, hey, in this 3-1-7 defense they're running, when you see number 47 and number 11 in the middle of the field, they're in the zone. If they're in the zone, find the whole city. If you see number 11 blitzing by itself, throw the ball at whoever's 47 is covering because he can't guard him on the crossing route. If number 47 and 11 are both coming, throw it at number 8, he can't guard the deep ball. From that point moving forward, you see LSU go on this, this tangent of scoring. Number 8, make no stops. Number 47, whenever they had wide outs, they had three wide on, on his side, and they ran the crossing route. He gave, he, he, he gave up a catch every single time. And when number 11 blitzed by itself, Joe Burrow took off running up the middle because he was the spy. And whenever he left the middle of the field, the middle of the field was wide open. So they gave them the adjustments to make, and the team came out and made those adjustments. So from that action right there, these three things got, got covered during that game. First things first, LSU, the leaders and the coaches, help those guys control the controls. They help them control what they can do. They help them control, hey, these are the adjustments we, we can make, these are the plays we can call, these are the routes we can run, based off what they're giving us. The same thing they help them do, they help them minimize the variables. It was all these variables with three guys being down line and one guy behind them and then the other seven guys behind them. They weren't sure they was blitzing, running zone, running man. So what they told them was, look, if number 11 is coming, the middle of the field is going to be open. Joe, run. If number seven is by, if 47 is by itself, 
whoever he's guarding, throw it at him. He can't guard him. When 47 and 11 both come, throw it at number 8. They minimize the variables and told them what they needed to do. And then lastly, they had them take massive action. Clemson took action by moving their cheese and giving them that 3-1-7 defense. But LSU took massive action by making the adjustments that was needed during that game time movement of the cheese to make this thing run. So, as a leader, being in leadership, you can talk the talk, but sometimes you gotta walk the walk. So what I'm telling you guys, with the changes that's going on, with the growth that's going on, don't expect these team members and players to know the adjustments that need to be made. You've been there before. You've, you've jumped ship the ship before and thinking the grass was green on the other side before, and you realized that it wasn't. So what you have to do as a leader, you gotta walk the walk for it. Saying, hey, all right, the comp plan may have changed, but if you do this many more back ends, it's gonna get you the same tier that you was at last time. Or hey, don't worry about the packages. You can pad your deal this much, this much, and this much, and it's gonna still get you the same deal level that you was getting last time. Or you might say, hey, you know what? I know you don't like the changes over here, but if you pitch this particular product right here, it's gonna raise your APT, which is gonna help you get to where you wanted to get to last time. So from a leadership perspective, you gotta help them control those controllables. Because there are a lot of things that they can't control that they might not necessarily think about. You gotta help them minimize those variables. And minimizing the variables could be different because each and every person got a different variable every single day. And then lastly, you gotta help them take massive action by giving them the blueprint and the game plan to go ahead and execute. Because you've been there before. But this is what I realized from my LSU game. If the leaders lead like they've been there before, the players will follow like they've been there before. 